Hi. I will share with you Kenya's experience of this journey so far. From the very inception, our aspirations for economic development and shared prosperity has been inextricably tied to a firm commitment to environmental sustainability. In my earlier statement, I did paint the picture of where we are as a continent. I mean, the power of industrialization that has been premised on fossil fuels, despite its adverse its effects, is what has driven industrialization in the world so far. The world today it has, is at a crossroads. The crossroads being, do we continue the fossil fuel powered industrialization, which is destroying our globe with disastrous effects? Or do we go green? I think that decision is no longer a decision that we are waiting to make. It is an existential threat that faces us as humanity and the option is already made for us that we can only go green. Why Africa is in a pivotal position as we go green is because number one, Africa has the highest reserves and potential for green energy, whether it is geothermal, wind, solar, hydro. No other part of the world has the resources we have. Number two, we have the resources in our continent, the mineral resources, the natural resources, for green energy technology. Number three, we have the greatest potential for green sustainable agriculture and food production because two-thirds of the world's uncultivated arable land is in Africa. And number four, we have the youngest population, energetic, innovative, creative, and in any case, a quarter of the world's population will live in the African continent by 2050. So if you are looking for the people to work for this globe, for humanity, whether you like it or not, they will be in the African continent. Forget about the small migration that is happening now from Africa. Shortly, I promise you, the migration will be in the opposite direction. Very short. The only thing that stands between us and the huge potential we have in this continent. And I want to encourage you as Chief Justices of our continent, the only thing that stands between us and this huge potential is a financial system that was designed to serve a different time. And that is why we are insisting that we must rethink the international financial system to align with the reality and the imperative of this moment. It is not sustainable anymore for us, the, have the IMF and the World Bank and the International Financial Institution in its current configuration. And we are not saying we want an international financial system that is favorable to Africa. No. We want an international financial system that is fair to everybody. <laughs> Having a fair international financial system is not asking for too much.
I think it's just asking for what is fair. We want to access development resources at the same rate as everybody else is. It is a fallacy for anybody to imagine that it is possible to grow any part of the world to the, ex uh, to the exclusion of any other part of the world. Because whether we like it or not, we share this globe. And if today anybody imagines that climate change is affecting the global south more than the global north, it won't be, it won't be for long. Shortly, we will all either float or sink. So the sooner we have a fair international financial system that makes it possible for us as humanity to exploit all the resources available to us in a sustainable manner, the better for all of us as humanity. The sooner we get ourselves there, the better. As a continent, we want to have a conversation that is balanced. Even as we demand for a fair international financial